So welcome everyone to American Dairy Association Northeast Virtual Farm Tour Program. My name is Emma Sporthau and I help run the program on behalf of dairy farmers that we work for. And today we're going to take a journey to Willowcrest Farms in Clifton Springs, New York to learn all about the amazing things that they do to care for their cows every day. So I'm going to start real quick. We actually have a drone shot of the farm. I wanted to give everyone a quick overview of the farm, uh, an aerial view, if you will. Um, so you can see um, these barns right here. Those are where the cows are housed. Those are called the freestall barns, and we'll actually get a tour from Hannah of those. Over here is where we're starting our tour. That is the calf area and the little hutches the calves live in. Um, so without further ado, Hannah Warden from Willowcrest Farms is more than happy to give us a tour today. All right, welcome everybody to Willowcrest Farm. As Emma said, we're starting out here with the calves and our little hutches. And you might see the tractor going around in the back. We just started feeding our girls this morning. So care for our animals starts from the moment they hit the ground. So our cows are gonna have their first baby at about two years old and every year after that. And as soon as that calf is born, we're gonna be there to help take care of it. So just like people have umbilical cords and belly buttons, so do our cows. So when a calf is born, we wanna make sure that we disinfect that to keep that nice and clean and then we let the cow lick the calf off. Um, it might sound kind of gross to us but that's how the calves get stimulated and going with the cows um, and then after that we're actually going to move the calf away from the cow because that's the way we can best care for our cows and our calves. So cows are a lot different than humans. They're born without any immunity. That means they can't fight off any germs um, or bacteria, things like that. What they need is the first milk from their mother, which is called colostrum, to do that. So we're going to move the calf away from the cow, and that way the cow can't accidentally step on it. The calf isn't exposed to any germs, and we're going to milk that cow, get that milk, and then feed it to the calf. So if the calf were to drink from the cow, we wouldn't be able to know how much milk the calf is getting, but we need to, so they need to have two bottles. So if we feed it on our own, we know for sure they're getting that right amount of milk. So after 24 hours, the calves are gonna come out over here. We're gonna bring them out here with the rest of them in these little individual hutches. So it's pretty windy here this morning. So the hutch is a really nice area. It blocks the wind. It's a nice little individual area for all the calves. And you can see they're bedded with sawdust in the summer because that's going to help out with the flies. And then in the winter time, they're going to get bedded with straw so they can nestle down on that. And then pretty soon we're going to start putting these little calf jackets on them too. So their head goes in here over their legs. So that keeps them nice and warm for the winter. So we want to take very good care of our calves. Um, while they're out here, they get fed milk three times a day. And I think we'll be able to see it pretty easily here. Um, we can, as they come through, we can step over this way and go see. Um, we've got these bottles that go right in the back. And so the calves know, we've taught the calves how to go to the back. The little calves will get fed by hand, but they're going to come over here and they're going to drink. So this is a really cool way to feed. And as I said, we feed three times a day and this milk has all the nutrients that the calves need. So you can see her in there drinking up that milk. Um, so they get fed this bottle three times a day. And one of the nice things is, is we can that way make sure the calves are drinking and healthy and happy. While they're in there, they also have, you can see there's some free choice grain in there for the calves to be able to eat. So the calves are gonna get milk for six weeks and then we're gonna start tapering the amount of milk they get off a little bit um, so that they start eating more grain. So they're gonna be in these hutches for uh, about two weeks afterwards and then they're gonna move to the calf barn out behind us and there they start going in a little bit bigger groups. So just like you guys have classes and graduate each year, they're, you know, each week they're gonna graduate up to a little bit bigger pen as they learn how to get along and spend more time with other calves and um, eventually they'll change to a TMR which we'll talk about more of the cows but we want to make slow changes so they get used to everything awesome. so you might notice that go ahead Emma yeah I was 
Uh, I was just going to ask about the ear tags, <laughs> but maybe you were going to get into that. Yes. So you can probably notice that our girls all have ear tags. They've all got their heads in drinking now, but they got that nice little yellow tag on their ear. Um, might be able to see hers. There we go. And that is, each calf has its own number. We have a lot of different animals on the farm, and all cows actually have unique different spots, but it's hard for us to remember that. And so this way we can identify each calf. And there's actually a computer program that goes with this ear tag. And on that computer program, we can see who their mother is, who their father is, when they were born, um, if they're ever sick, that's recorded on there. And just like you guys go to the doctors to get shots, um, the calves here, it's very important that we get them vaccinations. So that's going to keep them nice and healthy. So we'll have all of that information in there as well. So you can see this little girl here was thirsty and she drank up all her milk for this morning. So she'll get two more later today. Awesome. We did have a question come in from a classroom. What happens if a calf gets too big for its home? All right, so I said these girls are gonna get moved out at like six to eight weeks. So um, they are different sizes, but, but that's about the time when they're gonna outgrow this little house and go to the barn over here, which it's hard to see, but it's a group pen. Um, so that, that's how we do that. We have them move into different areas because we know they're always growing, just like you guys are growing. Your uh, desks are gonna get bigger as you guys go to older classrooms. Are there any other questions? Um, yep, we had a question from Antonio. How do baby cows get milk if the milk comes from the cows? So we're going to see later how we milk the cows, um, but we're going to milk the cows and then we take the milk from the cows and we actually pasteurize it and that kills any bacteria or anything like that that might have been in the milk well between the cow and the calf. Um, so then we put it in these little bottles for the calves to drink. So, um, you know, uh, in a beef facility, they drink directly from the cow, but here we milk the cow and that's the way we found that we can be the cleanest um, and that keeps our calves the healthiest. Awesome, and then actually we had another question in, come in from Colonax class, um, if I pronounced your name right. How tall are the calves right now? How tall? Hmm. They go up to about my hip about here. I guess maybe here's a little bit better example here of this calf that's outside. So this girl here is about a week and a half old. Um, she looks a little, little different than some of the others. She's actually half beef. Um, so we have a few of those on here. Um, and I actually, I, I jumped past, I'm Hannah Warden here at Willowcrest Farm. Um, this farm started 40 years ago with my parents, so I'm second generation. It's grown since my parents and now involves my two brothers, my husband, myself, and my parents. We have a lot of cows here, so we have a really good crew to help us um, take care of our cows. And it's all to make yummy, delicious milk for ice cream, yogurt, and um, cheese. Well, our, our results came back from our poll and every single classroom that participated got that question correct. And the question was, what are ear tags used for? So kudos to everyone for listening very well um, for our tour. And we do have a couple other questions that came in um, from Oceana. Do you guys test for diseases and how often do you take them to the vet? All right, so we have the vets come every week here to the farm and look through the cows and actually we work with a lot of our employees too and so they're really good at picking up on if a calf isn't feeling well so one of the first things that happens when you're not feeling well is you stop drinking so um if we have a calf that doesn't drink a meal we'll write it down you know she might not have been that hungry but if she doesn't drink a second meal then we're really gonna go we're gonna take her temperature we're gonna look at her we're gonna listen to her lungs um, and we work with our veterinarian a lot to know, you know, this is what this looks like. She might need some electrolytes. She might need this. And then if it's something we don't deal with a lot, we'll ask our veterinarian. Did they answer the question? Yep. That was a great answer. Um, and then from Demaray, uh, what is the little house for? So I think she's referring, um, they're referring to the hutch. Yep. So these are little hutches. So every calf gets their own little house. 
So it's really windy today. So it's gonna block the wind. It's gonna create a nice spot for shade for them in the summer. It's gonna keep the snow out in the winter. And just like um, little kids, little calves will sometimes get sick. And you guys might've noticed when you started going to school, you started getting sick a little bit more because your best friend gets sick and then you play and you're not as good at washing your hands and you get sick and our calves really can't wash their hands at all and they usually like to greet each other with a kiss so this way there's some space between them so this helps them stay healthier and this system works really well for our farm so that's how we have them separated like this when they're little and then they go into a group scenario when they're a little bit bigger awesome and then for Miss Devita, what happens with the calves when it snows or is very cold? Yep, so the hutch will protect from the snow and the calves will be able to be in there. And we had our little coats that we talked about and the straw. So they'll snuggle down in there and they'll be really nice and warm in there. Um, I've, I've been joking, our video man here didn't dress quite warm enough today and I keep telling him he should go in the hutch because he'll be nice and warm in there. He'll be out of the wind. So calves are actually pretty good at the cold weather. So as long as they have nice dry bedding um, and their coats, then they're really good. The thing that's not the most fun is for the guys feeding. They're the ones that have to trudge through all the snow, but the calves have that nice little area there for themselves. Awesome. Um, how many calves are born each year on your farm? Ooh, each year. So we end up having a about 1,600 calves born each year here on the farm. So we've got about that many cows and each cow has a calf um, every year. So um, we might get to this question later, but the girl calves are the ones that are gonna make milk and that's what we're gonna keep and go here in the hutches. And the boy calves, um, we're gonna sell when they're a few days old and healthy and going. And they're gonna enter the beef industry. Um, so that's something a little different for some people to think about, but they're going to a farmer who cares for them just as much as we do. And so they're going to have a great quality of life and really good care at that different farm. But we're here for beef, we, for dairy. We do have a few of these other ones that we're experimenting with, um, raising up a little bit, and then they're going to, we'll sell them when they're about four or five months old and they'll go to a, a beef farm to get good take care. Awesome. From teacher McHale's class, how old are the calves? So these calves right here are only about a week old. If you look really close, you can see their umbilical cord is dried up and hasn't quite fallen out on everyone. Um, so they're going to stay in this area until they're about two months old and then move over. And in that time, they're actually going to double their body weight. So when they're born, they're anywhere from 80 to 100 pounds. 200 pounds. So they grow really fast. Another fun thing about calves is they're up and walking around within half an hour of being born. So that's a lot different than people. Awesome. So we're going to keep moving. We still have a lot of great questions that came in and we will have time to address some more of those at the end. Um, so we're going to actually head to the freestyle barn next. And while Hannah walks over to the freestyle barn, we're gonna play a video of their milking area, also known as the parlor. Unfortunately, the Wi-Fi connection wasn't very great in the parlor because it's a steel roof barn that they keep it in. So we did a nice pre-recorded video for everyone to enjoy. All right, we are at our milking stop. So this is where all the action happens. This is our milking parlor. So the cows live out in the pen all day long and they only visit the milking parlor three times a day for about a total of 10 minutes each time. So we're gonna start the milking process. So you can see we've got our cows all lined up in here. And the first thing we do is we, what we call strip the cows. So I'm gonna get a little bit of milk out of each teat. And so what this does is I can check and make sure that all the milk is healthy looking and so it's nice and wholesome. And the other thing is too, is it signals to the cow that we're gonna start milking. So cows actually, do what we call let their milk down. So this is creating some stimulation for her to um, know that we're milking. So she starts that process. So when we go through, we go through when we do every single cow. Right now I'm just gonna do this first cow. So that gives her some time as they do the other cows before we come back. 
I'm wearing gloves because we want to make sure that we keep everything nice and clean. So your hands can have bacteria on them and gloves are, stay a lot cleaner. So that's what we're going to use to milk our cows today. So now that she's been four stripped, we're going to go through and we're going to clean her teats. So this is a little brush that Rose hates. You put your finger in there. It's nice and soft for the cow. And there's some liquid that squirts out too. And so it's going to sanitize the cow. So we're going to go through. And we're going to clean up each of her teeth. And what we want is to make sure that the cow is nice and clean. So we go through once and wash them. And then we're going to go through again and dry them. So the end of the teeth there's an opening for the cow, so there's the opportunity for bacteria to get in there. So we want to make sure things are really nice and clean for the cow and to make sure we've got that wholesome milk. So we'll go down the whole row with that as well. So we're going to give her a little bit of time right now to stimulate some more before we put the milking machine on. Uh, but you can see she's nice and clean now. The solution that was in the brush is actually um, it's to disinfect. And one of the things we think about here on the farm is the environment. And so the solution that's in there actually breaks down into salt and water. So that's one of the really cool things about the farm. Also with these brushes, this is a new technology that wasn't out 15 years ago. So dairy farming is really cool because we're constantly coming up with new ways to do things and different things. So not all farms are the same. We all have the same values and want to take care of our cows. But there's lots of different tools and things we can do to make that happen. So now, it's time to milk our cow. And there's suction on here, so we're just going to put it on. And so that's gently squeezing each teeth, and you can see the milk coming along through here through this hose, and that's going to go over into the milk room, which we'll look at next. So it only takes about three or four minutes for the cow to actually milk out. So there's a lot of the time is prepping the cow, and then she gets milked. And the milking machine is actually really smart. It knows how much milk is going through there. So when she's not making as much milk, the machine's going to come off automatically. We don't want to suck every drop out of her. We want to leave a little bit in there and make sure it's a nice, comfortable experience. So cows actually really enjoy coming into the milking parlor. It's a nice, relaxing experience for them. And we do everything here to keep it that way and keep them nice and happy. So we talked about chewing our cud. And so if a cow's nice and relaxed, a lot of times you'll find cows in the parlor that are chewing their cud. They're nice and relaxed. So cows um, actually start making milk when they have their first calf. So just like humans would make milk after they have a baby. So cows will make different amount of milk. On average, a cow is going to make 10 gallons of milk. But that changes kind of as time goes on. So when they first have the calf, they might be making 6 gallons. And then when that calf is 2, 3 months old, if you think about nature, that's when the calf would be drinking the most milk. So the cows make a lot of milk then. We have some cows that have had three or four babies that are actually making 20 gallons in one day. And then our cows get pregnant, and then they start tapering off and milk a little bit less and less after that. And then we actually give them a break before their next calf. So two months before their next calf is born, we well, that's what we call our dry cow period. So they're not going to get milked. They're going to get rested and prepared for their next calf. So our milking parlor is a double 12, which means we can fit 12 cows on each side. So we can have 24 cows milking at each time, and they'll be about four different groups of cows in here each hour. Um, so that's how we're able to milk as many cows as we have on this farm. And they come in three times a day. There we go. All right, so now that the machine's come off, the cow's all milked out. This girl actually had a lot of milk in her. I think she's right in that peak making a lot of milk. So she's probably making about 14 gallons right now. So what we're gonna do last, we talked about the teats have an opening and we don't want any bacteria to get in them. So since she just milked, they're a little bit more open than normal, and it's going to take them a little while to close up. So we are going to put this disinfectant lotion on them and cover them, and so that helps disinfect them. And then this has a lot of different things in it, like you would have lotion for your hands. So we want to make sure the skin is really healthy and moisturized, so our cows get moisturized three times a day.
All right, now that we've milked our cows, we're here in our milk room. So the milk travels through a stainless steel pipe into this room. So you can see there's a tank here behind me and then there's a tank over here on this side. We actually have two tanks. So the milk truck comes every day to pick up the milk. And we every time the milk tank is empty, it gets washed. So this tank over here is getting washed right now. We use super hot water and a special soap um, to rinse through and get everything washed so it's nice and clean. Um, when the milk comes in, it comes in warm from the cow's body. So we're able to actually cool it down. This is a plate cooler. And so what happens is that it's got cold water running through it. And that cold water takes the heat out of the milk to cool the milk down. And from there, it's going to go into our tank. And we want to make sure it gets cooled and that it's the proper temperature so we don't have any bacteria growth. So we have this little graph here. So you can see it's 37.4 degrees Fahrenheit for the milk right now. So it's nice and cool. And this has got an actual alarm on it. So if something happens, it's not cooling, an alarm's going to go off so we can fix the problem right away. Um, like I said, the milk truck comes every day to pick up the milk from this farm. So from here, the milk will go back to the processing plant where they're going to pasteurize it, which means heating it up to kill any bacteria that may be in it to make sure it's extra wholesome and healthy. And they're also going to make it nice and smooth, which is a process called homogenization. And then they'll package it and get it out to the grocery store or to your school with in as little as two days from it leaving the cow. So for many of you students in New York or northern PA, you might recognize the upstate milk. That milk actually, our farm is one of the farms that contributes to that milk. So you might be milking, drinking milk who's, that's gone through these tanks for lunch today. Awesome. So we actually have a quick question for everyone. So we're going to pull, pull off our poll right now and ask everyone a quick question. Um, and while you're taking time to answer that question, we did have a question come in from Kevin who wants to know how much milk a cow produces in a year. Um, I did some quick math on that. So Hannah had said in the video that a cow can produce anywhere from eight gallons um, a year. So in that range, and knowing cows do get two months off from producing milk, a cow can produce, depending on her breed, and pounds of milk a day, anywhere from 2,500 to 3,000 pounds um, every year. So people are still taking a little time to answer that poll. So I have a question for Hannah. Um, Miss. Pol Polana's class asked um, if milking the cows hurt them. How do you know that sucking? So, yep. So that that's a common question. Um, it's actually a really relaxing process for cows. On um, there, it's kind of nature. They're used to the calf nursing off of them, and so the suction is really gentle. Um, so that's why we talked about the cow chewing her cuds. So if the cows are relaxed and happy, they're chewing their cuds. So that's a sign that it's not hurting them, and that they actually, it's kind of fun. Different cows have different personalities. So there will be cows standing at the end of the pen who know it's milking time and are gonna be the first one into that milking parlor because they're so excited about it. Awesome, so the results from our poll are in and everyone got it correct. All of the above because they shipped to Upstate Farm. So Upstate Farm does milk for schools, cheese, yogurt, and actually um, bison dip for um, chips and dip that some of you may enjoy. Um, so a couple other questions on the milking process um, from Mikhail's class. How much milk can fit in the tank? That might, see, that might be a tough one off the top of your head. <laughs> yes, I do not know the answer of that one. I guess we'd have to take that, um, that 10 gallons and times it by a thousand so um, 10,000 gallons probably um, would be how much we can fit in our tanker load because it gets emptied um, every single day here and on our farm okay awesome and that actually answers another question because we have the same question how many gallons is a bulk tank hold so right around that 10,000 um, another question that came in um, and this I guess 
is more up to your processor, but from Nonan's class, how do you make different types of milk, whole milk, um, 2% skim? Um, and that might, I don't know if you have the answer to that question or not. Yeah, well, it's a, it's a interesting because um, all the cows make a little bit different amount of fat. So this cow might make whole milk, this cow might make 2%, but they're all going into the same thing. So when the milk gets to the processing plant, they're going to take all the fat out of it and they're going to make it into skim milk. And they do that by, um, it's kind of a process that kind of spins the milk so the fat goes was up to the top. And then after that, they're going to add certain amounts of fat in. So for 1%, they're going to add 1% fat in, 2%, 2%. Um, whole milk is going to be three. So that's how we can have a really nice routine thing. I want to take a second. Um, well, we've got it here. This is what we call our alley scraper in our barn here. So it is going back to start over in the beginning, but this is what's going to go through. It's going to open up and as it goes the other way, it's going to scrape all the manure to the end. So that runs all day long to keep our cows nice and clean. Awesome. Yeah. So we'll, we still have more questions, but we'll hold off because I think as you talk about the freestyle area, you might answer some of the questions we have. So okay, take it away. great. So yeah, we are here where the cows spend most of the time. The cows have definitely gathered around here. They want to know what's going on. Um, so you guys are adding a little bit more action to our girls' day today. So you can see there are different stalls around. Um, so we call it a free stall because there's the stalls that they're free to get up of. Uh, in, get out of. And so everything in this barn is designed for the comfort of our cows. So we can see our cow laying down in the, the stall here. We made sure it was just wide enough so that she lays nice and straight. That way if she goes to the bathroom when she's laying down, which sounds kind of gross, she's actually going to go out here into the alley where it's going to get moved along. Um, and then um, we've got nice open air sides here, but we also have curtains on there too. So when it gets really cold, we can drop those down to block off the air. So it's a little chilly for us today, but cows actually really like cold weather. They're big animals and they kind of got their own little heater in them. So this is perfect weather for them. The summer, they're not such fans, fans of, so that's why we have fans for the cows that go off in the summer. So when it hits about 65 degrees, it's, um, really nice and helps cool down our cows. Awesome. So we did yep. have a question come in from Miss Colana's class. How long are cows pregnant? So cows are pregnant for nine months, just like people. So they're going to have their calf. Um, they're going to wait a couple months. We're going to breed them again. They're going to be pregnant for nine months. Um, they'll stop milking the last two months and then have their calf again. Awesome. And so a question a bunch of that these girls Oh, sorry. A question that kind of ties into that from Miss Lane's class. At what age does um, a cow start producing milk? At two years old. So I was going to point out, if you guys can see this brown cow over here on this side, this jersey, she that is Pippi. Um, and she just had a calf about 30 days ago. So she's out here in another barn. Uh, the red cow wants to take the spotlight over instead. But... Um, so one of the things that's really important for our cows here in the pen is that they have free access to food and water all the time. So this is what we call a headlock here. Um, so most of the time you just open the cows can use it whenever they want, but it actually will lock if we need to look at the cows, if the vet needs to look at them. So that's a really good way to be able to manage them and look at them. Um, but this is our TMR feed up here. Our cows get fed twice a day. So you can see TMR is a total mixed ration. So it's all the food mixed together like a giant tossed salad. So you can see there's some little pieces of um, grain in here. The cow cows see me get it out and they want to come eat it. Um, but it's mostly made up of silage, um, corn silage, and haylage. And that's the corn and silage, um, corn and hay plants chopped up. And just like you guys have pickles at home that you don't need to put in the refrigerator, we turn this into a silage by fermenting it, and that way it can stay in nice quality for our cows and keep all winter long. Um, a couple cool things about cows is they can eat some things that we can't. So they eat different byproducts that would go to waste. So one example is cottonseed. So if you guys think about cotton balls, you don't realize it, but all those cotton balls actually have a seed in the middle that they take out before it gets to you. So our cows will eat that 
and um, it's a really good source of protein. And our cows actually can eat different bakery waste or ch leftover chocolate or things like that. We have a nutritionist that we work with who does the diets for all of the cows um, and looks at all of the different ingredients and everything in there and um, pays attention to what they are and so we can have a really nice diet for the cows. And if you look at this food, it doesn't really look very good to us. We can't really eat it, but cows can. And there's one reason cows can. They have four stomachs or four compartments to their stomach and that lets them eat things that we can't. Um, so the, and some different things about the stomach is they have a symbiotic relationship with some rumen is one of the stomachs, the rumen microorganisms. So there's little tiny microscopic bugs in there that eat the food the cow eats, and then the cow eats the bugs, and that's how she gets a lot of her um, fat and protein. Awesome. Um, another really cool thing, we talked about the cows chewing the cud, and you can see the cow laying down over here that's chewing her cud. Cows are gonna chew their food twice. So they get up, they eat a whole bunch, and then they go lay down and they actually kind of throw up their food and eat it again, which sounds really gross, but that's how cows are made. Um, and that's how their whole system works. So I really love cows because there's so many cool, unique things that they do and they're so different than people. Awesome, we have a question that came in from Niv and Bray Lynn, um, and it kind of ties right into TMR. Do the cows eat any grass? And in a way, you kind of answered this. Yep. So the um, haylitch is grass that's chopped up and fermented that we bring here to the cows. So for us, it works really well to bring the food to the cows. Um, so they're eating the grass there. They're not outside eating the grass on the lawn because they'd have to walk a lot further and it would be a lot more challenging. The other thing why why we have our cows in barns is because that's where we can best control the temperature for the cows. So in the summer, when there's a lot of grass out there, a lot of times it's really hot and the cows would rather be in here where there's fans for them. Oh, and then um, I have uh, another I, thing too, you guys might've. Oh, sorry. I was going to say, I think I have a yep, fun, I have a fun question for you that I think you'll like answering Hannah. Um, Niv and Brayland also want to know, do you ever wash the cows? Ah, <laughs> so do we ever wash the cows? So usually the cows don't get washed, but sometimes we bring our cows to some special events like the fair or things like that. And so in that case, they do get bad. So it's a lot like washing a dog and they usually like it pretty good. Um, we have this red cow over here. She's been to the fair before, so she's had um, baths before as well. Awesome. I was gonna say, you can see on this cow, the um, around her neck, she has a collar. And so that system is um, an activity system. And 9811 is going to be the perfect example of a super active cow. So cows become more active when they are ready to be bred. And so she came running up here. You might see her jump on some other cows because she's ready to be bred. So those collars let us know when it's time to breed the cows. We don't have bulls on the farm. And then they also let us know if a cow's not moving around as much, she might have a sore foot. So we have a report, we can go look at the cow and say, oh, yep, you know, we need to give her a foot trim or look at this. Um, and another cool thing about the collars is they actually record how the cow, how much the cows chew. They've got a little microphone that listens to them. So just like with the calves, if a cow's not feeling well, the first thing that's gonna happen is she's gonna stop eating as much. So we can look at cows right away to make sure um, that they're healthy. So they might have a stomach ache or they might have something else that we can go and we can help treat them right away and take the best care of them. Awesome. Bella would like to know how the cows get their colors. How the cows get their colors. So yes, we've had an example of three different colors of cows here. So there's different breeds of cows, just like different breeds of dogs. So most of the cows you see are the black and white Holsteins, but the black and white Holsteins also come in red and white too. And then we have the one brown cow, which is a Jersey. And one of my favorite things about cows is just like your breeds of dogs are known for different things, different breeds of cows act differently too. So the Jersey cows are usually pretty nosy. They like to play with their tongues a lot. Holstein cows can be kind of bossy. Um, so that's just one of the really fun things about working with cows is seeing how they're all a little different. Awesome. 
Um, also from McCarney's class from Jessica, if the cow has a stomach ache, how do they know which stomach has the problem if they have four stomachs? I really like that answer or that question. Um, so we will take a, um, what you'd listen to your lungs with and we can listen to the stomach and see if it's working. So, um, and the veterinarians have worked with it enough to know. So one of the stomachs is an abomasum. So one thing that can happen is a cow can have what we call displaced abomasum. So she gets a lot of gas in there, it floats up. And it's kind of interesting how we take care of it when that happens. Um, the veterinarian will come and we'll roll the cow over to onto her back and then the stomach floats up to her belly and then we can just stitch it down there a little bit and then as she gets back to normal it'll stay where it's supposed to. So we rely on our veterinarian um, to be able to help us with a lot of those things. Awesome and then from Miss Megan's class again how many calves can a cow have at one time? So cows usually have just one, a lot like people, um, but we usually get, we'll probably have two or three sets of twins each month. Um, this year we had a set of triplets, which is actually pretty rare, and our triplets were all girls, so that was really exciting for us. Um, but it runs about the same as humans, and then the cows are going to live to about eight or ten years so if they have a calf every year, they're usually going to have between five and six calves while they're here on the farm. Awesome. And then the fourth graders from Bethel Park, Pennsylvania, were wondering how long cows live and how many employees work at your farm. Yep. So they live that eight to 10 years. Um, employees on our farm, we have about 25 full-time employees. So the farm is a 24-7 operation. No matter what day of the year or what time of day, if you get here, there's someone on the farm taking care of the cows. So we wouldn't be able to do that unless we had all these really good people who work with us. So we take a lot of time and effort to, you know, make sure our cows are happy, but then make sure all the people that are working for us to keep our cows happy are well treated too. Awesome. And I will make a note, you, um, you students have a lot of really great questions. So I am writing responses to some of your questions. So keep an eye out for those written responses. Um, another question is, how do you measure the cows? Um, and it doesn't say height or weight, but I guess you could talk a little bit about both. Yep. So um, when we decide to breed our heifers for the first time, we want to make sure they're the right size um, and make sure they're ready to have a first baby. So a lot of the ways we do that is on how much they weigh. So we want our cat, our heifers to weigh 900 pounds when we breed them, um, which is about a little bit more than half of what they'll end up weighing as a mature cow. So we can put the cows on the scale to weigh them. We don't tend to do that quite routinely. Um, one thing we do do to look at the health of the cows is what we call body condition scoring. So you can see the different parts of the cows. You can see there's the hip bones and the pin bones um, and how much flesh is on them. We routinely go through and the veterinarian gives all the cows a score so we can see, all right, you had a calf, you know, it's been 60 days. Have you lost weight? Have you gained weight? So that we know, you know, make sure the cows are healthy. So that's how we record that. Awesome. And then Jerry would like to know about vaccinations. How do they vaccinate cows without hurting them? Yep. So it's actually much easier to give cows shots than it is to bring my kids to the doctors. Um, the cows, usually you can just give them a shot. We'll give it to them kind of in the shoulder and they don't even know what happened. So we're going to, that's why we have the headlock so we can lock them up so then we can go through and we can give the cows shots and we have a different program so the calves get it. But then the cows actually are getting shots while they have that calf in their belly too to help make sure that that milk that they make when that calf is born is of really good quality. Awesome, thanks so much, Hannah. Um, and I don't wanna keep interrupting you with questions, Hannah. So if there's any other points that you wanna cover, just let me know. If not, we still have a lot of really good questions. Yep, I think I got through everything I was looking, through, looking to go over. So I'm happy to answer questions. Awesome, so um, just so everyone knows, we have about five minutes left to our formal tour time. Um, Hannah is willing to stay a little bit after our allotted time to continue answering questions, but we do understand that, you know, 
at 10.45, we will end the tour for those of you who have to go. Um, so another question came in from Provident Charter School Science. How many cows are milked at one time and do you rotate which cows are milked? Yep, so our milking parlor can fit 12 cows on each side. So theoretically, 24 cows at one time. So you can see we're in a pen of cows, we have different pens. So there's about 200 cows in this pen. So it all depends on what cat order the cows go up in. So this pen is went to the parlor at about nine o'clock this morning. So it depends on what order they went in. So they're gonna get milked about that time, but um, they're not all gonna go in and in the exact same order every time. Awesome. Um, another question we had um, for Miss Polana's class, do cows ever run around? Yes, they do run around. Um, they usually, when they go to the parlor, is a nice time for them to be able to run. So they'll run up to the parlor. And it's funny, the younger cows will run a lot more than the older cows. The older cows are just kind of like, eh, I'm going to walk now. And actually, some of our really old ladies, we make sure we put them close to the parlor so they don't have to walk quite as far. But the young cows like to be able to run, so we'll put them a little bit further away. Awesome. And I, two different classrooms have asked this question. I know Mrs. Lane's classroom and there was one other one. What is the average lifespan of a cow? Yep. So it's eight to 10 years. So most of these cows here, this is one of our older pens. So um, these cows here are probably about six years old. Most of the girls in here. Yep. Awesome. So you can see 9811. She's probably a couple years older than 11, uh, 11, 180. Gotcha. Um, do you ever let the cows out in open fields from Mrs. Lane's class? So our cows don't go outside into open areas. They kind of go outside on their way to the parlor, but um, we're not set up to be able to have them go in those open areas. And really our cows, um, this girl is really wanting some attention. Our cows um, like to spend their time eating and sleeping. Um, and they do, they get some exercise in this pen about as much as they want. You can see the um, alley scraper here coming through to clean out the barn. Um, but they get all the exercise they need in the pen here. Um, they don't really care to go outside too much. Awesome. Um, and then here's a really good question. Do you like your job as a dairy farmer? So I do like my job as a dairy farmer. I'm glad you asked. Um, and dairy farming, there's only about 1% of the population people are involved with. So we need more people like you guys to come start, learn how to um, dairy farm. I actually went to college for dairy farming. So for me, my favorite part is interacting with the cows and keeping the cows healthy. And it's not the same thing every day. There's different challenges every day and different things to talk about. And um, it's really cool because I'm taking care of animals, but then we're also taking care of the environment as well. Awesome. And then um, from Miss Colana's class, do cows sleep standing up or do they ever lay down? That is an excellent question. I have no idea where cow tipping came from because our cows always sleep laying down. So they're actually going to spend like a good 10 hours of their day laying down. Um, and they don't do it at like we do all at one time. They'll get up, lay down for about an hour and, and then get back up. Um, so yes, they, they sleep laying down. Awesome. And then from uh, Teacher Mills class, do you crop farm as well? Yep, so we have quite a few acres of crops here, and most of what we do is food for our cows, but we also have some peas that we do, um, and then sometimes some corn or soybeans that get sold um, here on the farm. Awesome. And then from Teacher Sanger's class, when were cows domesticated from student Izzy? That's a historical question. I don't even know if I know the answer Ooh. to that. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to tell you to go to Google with that. I want to <laughs> say it's the 1700s or something, um, but it was a long time ago. They are some of the first animals to be domesticated. So certainly you don't find cows in the wild anymore. You find them on farms and, you know, they're domesticated because they make such a great nutritious product um, and they're, 
they're just so good at taking foods that we can't eat and making those into really delicious foods that we can eat. Yes, and I do know that the first cows to come to the United States um, were when the English settlers came over. So that was the first time we had them here, but over in uh, England and Europe, they were using cows uh, long before we were. Um, we are at 1045, so if people need to jump off, feel free to do that. Otherwise, we will continue to answer questions. Um, before we go, I want, for those that need to jump off, any last <laughs> words from Hannah? Uh, thank you for joining. The cows are really starting to mob now, um, but I'm so glad that we could share what we do here on the farm with you guys. Um, it makes me happy to know that we have good products. Would you stop that, please, Pippi? Uh, such good, healthy products for you guys, um, and thank you for sharing time with us. Awesome, and feel free to follow their farm on Facebook at Willowcrest Farms, and if you have other questions, you can ask Hannah through their Facebook page.